If you were to look up database in a dictionary, it would probably say something like structured store of information. And we look at, if you look at this information that I imported from the Excel spreadsheet, we can see that it's organized nicely into columns and they contain uh, an, in, um, an individual piece of information. In this case, things like uh, continent, area, population, and that's called a field. And it's arranged into rows, which contain all the pieces of information about each country in this case, and that's called a record. But storing that information isn't a great deal of use unless we can actually analyze it or use it to answer questions by sorting it and searching it. And in Access, um, there's at least three ways to do that. So I'm going to give you a quick run through each of the three types then, and then in future videos, I'll go into a bit more detail. So the first and easiest way is probably to use filtering like you would do in Excel. So at the top of each um, field, when you've opened the table, what you'll see is the, the name of the field and to the right of that you'll see a little triangle and if you click on that you get um, a list of all of the unique entries in that column. So this um, box looks exactly the same as the one, it, one you see in Excel when you use filtering. So for example if I wanted to find out all of the countries in Europe I could go to the continent column and I could tick only Europe and it would just show me the European countries and whereas in Excel you have to count them up yourself it does tell you at the bottom in access how many there are so there's 27 uh, records that we can see in Europe also we see the filter uh, the funnel next to the field name to remind us that we've got the uh, filter on and it does tell you that it's filtered at the bottom so if you want to go back to the full list we can go back and clear or we can just tick select all you can do that on as many columns as you like. So if I wanted to find out all of the countries in Europe that had a 100% literacy rate, for example, I could go over here and I could um, tick 100 as well. One of the downsides of using this particular method is it only combines your different criteria using an AND. So here we're looking at countries that are in Europe and have a literacy rate uh, um, of 100%. If we want to do uh, an OR, for example, you need to use one of the other methods that I'm about to show you in a minute. Um, so we can do that and again we've now got two funnels and we can see that there's 15 countries uh, in Europe with a, a literacy rate of 100%. Um, as well as looking for exact matches we can do things like um, we can um, go to text filter so if we select a, a text field you get an option called text filter and you can look for things that either equal or don't equal uh, a particular string but also ones that begin with or don't begin with etc so you can find all the ones that begin with a if you wanted to do that for example so there's seven countries that na whose names begin with a and you can also do a similar thing with numbers so if you wanted to find out all of the countries with a literacy rate of greater than 90 percent for example you could do that with a number filter so it recognizes what type of information is in that column so we could say literacy is greater than or equal to 90 okay so so there's 48 of those what you don't seem to be able to do as easily as you can in um, Excel is add multiple criteria on the same field so you don't seem to be able to say greater than 10 and less than 20 but we can do that using the other methods that I'm going to about to show you later on. So that's one of the drawbacks. Uh, another of the drawbacks is that the this search, these search results aren't saved. So if we want to repeatedly do the same query, then we can um, use another method. Um, what we can also do here is we can sort. So if we wanted to find out all of the countries in Europe uh, in alphabetical order, for example, uh, I can choose Europe here. I can sort them into either ascending or descending order using these options here. So Albania is the first country in Europe and I'm still looking at these so just be careful when you do this sort of thing that you, none of your other filters still apply so I'm just going to clear the filter from literacy there. So of the 27 countries in Europe Albania comes first and Yugoslavia comes at the end you can see this um, data is quite old so that's um, probably the, the easiest and most straightforward way. But as we can see, it, it, we have to include all of the records, oh, sorry, all of the columns in our results, and we can't save this. So if I wanted to do this again next week, I'd have to come back and select those filters again. So uh, it's better to use one of the other methods. 
So I'm just going to um, close my table and I'm going to create something called a query. So I'm using Access 2007 here. Uh, so for some reason, uh, queries are in other, later versions of Access. Um, are almost identical except queries have their own section on the toolbar. So I'm going to go to a query design. I'm going to make my own. And the first thing you do when you're creating a query is to choose which table or tables. So we'll have a look at multiple table um, queries in a later video, but I've only got the one. So I'll just double click that and then I click close. So the first thing uh, we need to think about is what we want to be able to see as the results uh, result of our search. So if I want a list of all the countries in Europe, for example, the minimum I want to see is the name of the country. Otherwise, um, you know, I won't actually be able to understand the results. So you need to include all of the fields that you want to see, and you can just either double click them or you can come down here and select them from the list. So these, this um, sort of table at the bottom is things you'll see as the result of the table, um, as a result of the query. Um, so if I wanted to find out all the European countries, for example, then I could um, click on a continent because the continent field tells us whether the country is in Europe. And what we do on the criteria column is we just type in what we're looking for. So very much like the filtering. So we're looking for Europe. So in a in a in another video, I'll show you how to use this in a bit more detail, but I'm just giving you um, a brief flavor of the three different ways of searching. So um, that what this will do is it will show me the country and the continent for all of the records in the database where the continent matches the word Europe. And what we can also do is we can sort. So on the sort row, I can sort those into ascending order if I want to, or whatever order I want. And if I um, have a look at the results of that now, uh, I, if I use this top left button, the top left button is probably the most useful one in the whole of Access. If I click on there now, it'll show me the results. Now, actually, I know that they're all in Europe, so I don't really need that column. I need to include that column down here because I need to have the, the search term in there, but I'm just going to untick that box because we don't need to see it. So now if I click that, well, I literally just get a list of all the countries and it will tell me how many there are, etc. Okay, so one of the benefits of um, using a query as well as being able to restrict the, the fields that we show is that we can save it. So if I click on the little disk button up there, or even if I just close it, if I just close it, it will say, do you want to save that? So I'll say yes. And again, I'm going to uh, use the Lezinski Reddit naming convention. So I'm going to call it QRY for query, and then I'm going to call it uh, Europe. So it saved that. And if I want to find out all the European countries again, I can just come back and I can just double click that query. And there it is, 27 countries in Europe. Now what it saves though, is not the results. It doesn't save the list it saves how to find the list. So if I go back and change my query now, so if I want to um, edit that, I can either double click it and use the top left button or I can right click and go to design view. So um, that information there says how to find it, that's what it saved. If I just go back here, so there were 27 countries. So if I go back and change the information, so if I say Switzerland is now in Asia, obviously it's not, but um, if I run my query now, it'll show that there's only 26. So the results of queries get updated as the, as the information changes. So that's quite useful. So I'm just going to put that um, obviously back to Europe. Otherwise my future results will be wrong. Notice that you can have tables and queries open at the same time and have multiple tables and things. You just get different tabs at the top, just like you would do in your browser if you had two web pages open. So that's um, a query, that's quite useful. It can save um, your searches and you can run them again later on. You can also um, use uh, search criteria from forms and things, which we might have a look at um, later on in the course as well. So that's one way. The other thing, I said this top left button is quite useful. Um, if you have a look on there when you're creating a query, you get a choice. Probably the most common choices are the datasheet view, which is the results of the query, and the design view, which is where you chose your criteria and how you wanted to sort, etc. But there's this also this other view, which you don't get for tables, 
called SQL view because the third way of creating a query or search in Access is to use something called SQL. SQL is um, it's a, a bit like a programming language. It's called Structured Query Language and it allows you to create a query using text-based commands. So you can type in what you want it to look for. Um, but when you're learning SQL, it's quite a useful feature of Access to be able to switch between a query that you've created using um, the Access Query Editor and the SQL view. So it will show you what the equivalent SQL would be and then you can um, have a look. So it's the, there are some keywords, again we'll go into this more, more uh, in more detail. So you can select um, and it, you choose your fields. You can um, say which table they're from. You can put your criteria in, so where, and you can order by, so that's sorting. You can also uh, do things like calculations and grouping. Now you might be thinking, well, why would you do that when it's easier to just double click things and type in your criteria on the query page? But there are some things, so have a look at my union query video for example, that you can do in SQL that you can't do in any other way. It's also quite useful if you're writing a program in some other programming language, so you're creating a Python program that acts as a accesses a database for example, what you can do is you can come to access, you can do your query in the visual way and then convert it into SQL, copy and paste the code into your programming language. Okay, so we'll have a quick look at that later on. If you're doing GCSE computer science or certainly um, A level and beyond then you might need to use SQL. If you're just doing an ICT course um, then you might not need it unless you need to do something that you can't do in other ways such as the union query. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the three different ways of searching for information and access. You can use filtering, you can use an access query or you can start uh, a query from scratch using structured query language or SQL.